It is more than four years since we watched in horror as a tower block in West London was engulfed in flames. The legacy of the Grenfell fire tragedy has been longer, deeper than any of us could have imagined that day back in June 2017. Its impact felt not just by the family and friends of the 72 who died in Grenfell Tower, not just by the community in North Kensington, but by tens of thousands of people who fear or indeed have been told that they face the same risks in flats that are now deemed unsafe. And according to some estimates, perhaps three million living in homes they simply can't sell, thanks to a row about who should foot the bill for removing dangerous cladding. Flat owners, those who own the building, developers or the taxpayer. After months of indecision and mounting criticism, the government appears to be on the brink of announcing a new approach, perhaps thanks in part to the fact there is a new housing secretary, Michael Gove. We think we know what he's about to announce, thanks to a leak to Lewis Goodall, the policy editor for BBC Newsnight. We'll hear from him in just a second and then turn to one of those affected and one of those in the House of Commons who has been campaigning for change. Lewis joins us. Congratulations on the scoop. Let's go way back, though. When we talk of all these thousands, perhaps millions affected, who are we talking about? Well, we're talking about people up and down the country, Nick, virtually in every city, in every uh, large town, potentially, as you say, up to uh, three million. And we're not just talking about, I think this is really, really important. It, we call it the cladding crisis, but it's not just the cladding crisis. It is a building safety or fire safety crisis because it affects a legion and array of different uh, fire defects and fire safety issues, whether it's fire cavity breaks or poor insulation or whatever it is, that have been discovered since Grenfell and that leaseholders, many people who have bought their homes, sometimes on shared ownership schemes, been told to get their foot on the property ladder, suddenly found themselves with properties that are effectively worthless and with huge remediation bills that they're having to confront and pay for themselves. So one guide to whether you've got a problem is whether you're a leaseholder. Mm -hmm. The other is, slightly curiously, if you don't live in one of these places, this is the height of the building you live in. Completely. And uh, up to now, and this is the crucial thing that Michael Gove is going to announce in terms of the difference on Monday, up to now the government assistance has been only for buildings over 18 and a half metres. Government ministers have previously said, look, uh, buildings under 18 and a half metres, they're not as big a fire safety risk, so people shouldn't have to be paying for this. The big change that Gove is going to signal, Mr Gove is going to signal on Monday, is that the government is shifting on that and say that actually for buildings over 11 metres as well, the government will ensure there is £4 billion of extra funding. But it won't necessarily be, and this is the crucial point, taxpayer funding. Mr Gove is setting, going to set himself the challenge to raise that £4 billion from developers, and that is going to be a difficult task. Well, there's the interesting thing, isn't it? He's not saying, let's have another new tax on developers mm -hmm. to guarantee £4 billion. He seems to have agreed with the Treasury, according to the documents that you've revealed, that they want to, they aim to get that money from the developer. Indeed, and this uh, document from Simon Clark, the Chief Secretary to the Treasury, to Michael Gove, is, I'm told, a product of many weeks and months of deep negotiations between the Department for Leveling Up and the Treasury. And indeed, I think it's fair to say that Mr Gove would have liked more activism from the Treasury. He would have liked perhaps some more public money. He would have liked to see more money, not just for cladding, because this is going to for be funding just for cladding, but for the wider suite of fire safety measures, as I said. But we've seen, as we've seen with so many different bits of government policy at the moment, the iron fist of the Chancellor coming in and saying, no, you can't have that. And I think this is very much going to be Mr Gove's attempt to effectively make the best of a bad situation go after developers, but of course, they are very, very reluctant to pay any more money. They're already paying a levy and they'll say, well, look, wait a minute, you're the government, you're the ones who have overseen the system of poor regulation. Shouldn't you be putting your hand in your pocket as well? Lewis Goodall, thank you very much indeed. Well, listening to that is one of those who desperately does want to see more money going to try and solve his problem, the problem of other people he speaks for as well, Steve Day, and also Sir Peter Bottomley, who's Conservative backbencher and chair of the all-party parliamentary group on leasehold and common hold reform. Uh, Steve Day, morning to you. Just tell us your situation before we widen out to the other people you represent. What is the scale of the problem you're facing? Well, oh, we have um, a £31,000 bill per flat for cladding costs and um, about £5,000 per flat non-cladding costs and um, extra 3000 a year service charge, which is uh, huge for uh, South East London, which is in a particular rich area. And uh, people are facing arrears um, and high levels of stress. And it's all to do with the fact 
that uh, we managed to prove our uh, developers didn't uh, keep to building regulations in force at the time for any of this building work. So this program that um, Gove has announced is only really um, covering um, a small part of that. Well, just to stress, he's not announced it yet. He's due to announce it next week. This is a a leak of the conversations he's having in government about it. From what you've seen then, spell out why you think it doesn't deal with the whole problem. Well... (laughs) So there's shortfalls in cladding. So when um, when the cladding comes off, we've seen um, potential um, cost escalations. Um, and as I said, those non-cladding costs um, and um, interim costs, so these high waking watch for costs for 24-7 fire wardens and insurance increased costs, all of this isn't supported. And that's basically what I'm campaigning for with uh, my amendment. An amendment to what? Just spell that out. So it's an amendment to the building safety um, bill. And um, instead of these voluntary contributions we're seeing here, um, and that's very difficult to um, bring in because some um, investors um, in these uh, builders may say, well, um, four billion is um, a third of our 12 billion dividends and we don't want to give up our dividends. And so we're very concerned that voluntary contributions will just not be deliverable. So Polita Pays, our amendment offers a mechanism to elicit those voluntary contributions outside of the court with a scheme um, that makes them, the government will just make them pay if they're at fault, where they breach building regulations at the time and bring in this extra money. And if they um, did choose to cause um, a bit of a a hassle, we've made um, the appeals process very, very simple by using the first hit tribunal to minimise the mm. risk of judicial... Let's abuse. just turn to Sir Peter Bosomley then. Sir Peter, do you think there is any chance of that sort of amendment in the House of Commons getting passed? And what do you think of what you're hearing of what the government are planning to announce? Very simple to do with the first question. I think that the, the purpose of the amendment is what's going to happen. The amendment itself, I'm not sure, does it securely. Uh, the, the issue is how do you find the problems, fix the problems and then fund them and from what we're hearing, progress is being made. It's not enough. I pay tribute to the gladiators, the fire clad campaign groups, the National Lease Oil Campaign, Lease Oil Knowledge Partnership, and the others who, even before Grenfell, including David Amos on fire safety, were campaigning. We need to get the money, spend it properly, and we need to overcome the hurdle, which is there are obvious claims by leaseholders on everyone responsible. Leaseholders were not responsible. The developers, the builders, the uh, people who specify building regulations, building uh, control people, the component manufacturers, all of those are responsible. But the only people who can claim from them are landlords who won't do it without indemnity funding from leaseholders. So mm. governments get together, get, get the right to make the claim, tell the insurance companies who are the ones who are going to pay up in the end, you're going to come to the table with, say, £8 billion, and then the innocent leaseholders will live in homes which are safe and saleable. Isn't the problem now that... Those developers who don't wish to hand over large sums of money have now had an alert, really, and we'll be talking to their lawyers about how they can resist this, and that will take time, and time means that the people who are trapped in these homes are either trapped in unsafe homes or trapped and unable to sell their homes. It's a question. The sensible answer is that actually it's their insurance companies behind them who will have to come to the table. These people don't pay out for themselves. They have insurers who've been let off lightly so far because only the leaseholders are having to pay at the moment and only the leaseholders can't claim because leaseholders by law don't own a single brick. So we can get round that problem with a bit of imagination. Well, the question is whether the threat, though, which is in this leaked letter, the talk of a threat of taxing if the developers, if they don't cooperate... Is that threat going to do the job or do you think that the House of Commons, the government actually has to move to take action in order to be seen to be taken seriously? The the government needs to take action. The government needs to take action. Parliament needs to take action. And I wouldn't go worrying about that. And the fact that we've heard some of this in advance of whatever statement may come isn't important. What is important? And we've, we've had some of this over ground rents where making people pay up hasn't even shifted the share price of the companies. So I don't think we should worry too much about that. The fact is, we now have ministers who take the housing thing seriously. There are six million leaseholders. A million are affected by this scandal, and we're going to solve it. And if it takes another five years, so be it. But we shouldn't let it, because people are living in homes which may not be safe and certainly aren't saleable. So, Peter, thank you very much indeed. Last word to you, Steve Day. I just heard you trying to uh, get in there. What did you want to say? Well, we've had top parliamentary counsel, that's a lawyer in government that's worked for 20 years, Daniel Greenberg, 
sign this off with the top construction QC. So this polluter pays amendment, and we've been working with government for six months with Lord Greenhow and his team directly. Um, Daniel Greenberg in our polluter pays conference in the House of Lords said there's no more issues from the department. So no, I don't accept that the amendment won't work. It will force those responsible to pay in full, and it will transform fire safety uh, in construction for generating to come to honour those victims in Grenfell that have been failed by corner cutting. And that's why the polluter pays amendment must. And I implore Michael Gove, we've worked together now for six months, please, please put this amendment in and resolve this crisis for generations to come, not just now. Thank well, we, you. We've heard your case. <laughs> we hope to hear from Mr Gove next week when he can publish his proposal. Steve Day, Sir Peter Bottomley, and before that, Lewis Goodall, thank you.